Joshua. So this is our second last message in the book of Joshua. We've been, this is week number 10 in this series on the Old Testament book of Joshua. And, uh, and today and t- today and next week, uh, Joshua is, is talking about the fact that uh, he's nearing the end of his life. He knows he's, he knows he's going to be dying soon. And he wants to be sure that he's leaving the, the, the nation of Israel, the people that he has led over the last number of years, he wants to make sure that he's leaving them set up for success. And, uh, and so that's what we're, we're looking at uh, today and, and next week. And uh, so Joshua... Chapter 23, if you're following in your Bibles or Bible apps, Joshua chapter 23. And our first first point this morning is trust God to fight your battles. Trust God to fight your battles. So I want to read a few verses here. Joshua 23 verses 1 to 5. And then it picks it up, the same theme again, in verses 9 to 11. So we're going to go 1 to 5 and 9 to 11. We'll come back and do verse 6 after. So after a long time had passed, and the Lord, just a reminder too, um, it's important when, I, I think it's important when we're reading the Old Testament and we see this Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, we remind ourselves constantly that that is, uh, it's, a, it's a code for God's actual name, Yahweh, which means I am in Hebrew, right? But it's the, it's the name of God, the name of Israel's God, Yahweh. So when we see this, all caps, now when you've got capital L, small o-r-d, that's a different word, Right? But this is Yahweh, right? So, after a long time had passed and Yahweh had given Israel rest from all their enemies around them, Joshua by then was a a very old man, summoned all Israel, their elders, leaders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all these nations for your sake. It was Yahweh, the Lord your God, who fought for you. Remember how I have allotted as an inheritance for all the tribes of all the land, all the nations that remained, the nations I conquered, Joshua says. So he led them. It was him, in some sense, that conquered these lands between the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Yahweh, your God himself, will push them out for your sake. He will drive them out before you, and you will take possession of their land as Yahweh, your God, promised you. And down to verse 9. Yahweh has driven out before you great and powerful nations. To this day, no one has been able to withstand you. One of you routes a thousand, so defeats a thousand. One of you routes a thousand because Yahweh your God fights for you just as he promised. So be very careful to love Yahweh your God. So, Interesting, first, the first thing I want us to focus on here is that uh, Joshua, in, his, in the first section here, he talks about, remember, remember all the things you have seen, all the things God has done for you. As these nations have been conquered, you have seen it. Remember what Yahweh has done. Right? Remember what God has done for you. He did it, right? 
Um, and then he says, and then he switches, so that's the past tense, and then he switches to the future tense in verse 5. The Lord your God himself will push them out for your sake. So his job isn't done. He has won battles for you, and he will win battles for you. He will push them out for your sake. And I think sometimes in our lives, we need those reminders too. One of the reasons that I think as followers of Jesus, we sometimes slip into, fall into, give into fear in our lives. Panic, anxiety, oh no, what am I going to do? Right? Oftentimes, the reason we fall into fear as followers of Jesus is we, first of all, forget what God has done for us. We forget that it was Him that did it. Right? We, we, you know, we remember our lives and we're like, oh yeah, I went here, I went there, I did that, this happened, you know, and that mess happened, and oh, I got out of that one, and and we forget that it was God that did it. Right? He fought our battles. He was there in the mess, picking us up when we fell down, pushing back the enemy who wanted to destroy us. He was the one that brought about the miracle that got us back on our feet. It was Him, and we forget that. And if we forget that, then we forget that it's Him that's going to be with us tomorrow when the next thing hits our lives, right? And so Joshua is reminding the people, remember what God did, because that same God who was there with you, who fought those battles, who got you through, who made you victorious, that God is going to be with you tomorrow when you face the next challenge that you face. And then he says, one of you, it's interesting, one of you, one of you routes a thousand because the Lord your God fights for you. Right? So it's a little confusing sentence, to be honest. Is it you or is it him? Right? One of you routes a thousand. Because the Lord your God fights for you. Is it you or is it Him? Right? And the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. It's you and Him. Right? I mean, it's mostly Him. But God expects you to show up. God expects you to suit up and step up. And then He will do the victory through you. Right? There's no way that I could have seen the victories that I've seen in my life if it wasn't God doing it through me. There's no way. But if I hadn't suited up and stepped up and shown up, then none of it would have happened either. Right? God wants to work through you. He wants to do His work through you. He wants to bring His victory through you. But we always need to remember that it's Him because the moment we start taking credit for what God did, we're in trouble. Right? The second, second thing that I think this passage, this phrase tells us is that imp impossibilities are nothing to God. Right? One of you routes a thousand. You got a thousand things coming against you. You got a thousand demons that want to kill you. And yet you will be victorious 
Why? Because impossibilities are not a problem for God. Being outnumbered is not a problem for God. Right? The sign that you saw on your way into the parking lot this morning says, remember, every miracle started as a crisis. Every situation that you face that you're like, ah, what do I do? Look what happened. It's not a problem for the God of impossibilities. Amen? One of you routes a thousand. And then he says, in verse 11, So be very careful to love the Lord your God. Yahweh your God. It kind of almost doesn't seem like it fits. He's talking about all this victory and God's going to win the victory and, you, you know, all this. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. God fighting for us is based on our relationship with Him. Right? Romans 8.28 says this, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. That's an important qualifier, right? This doesn't mean that God causes all things to work together for everybody in the world. Because a huge number of people in the world have said to God, I don't care about you, I don't want you in my life, I don't need you, thank you very much. And so God just says, all right. See how that works out for you, right? But for those who love him, he is closely and intimately involved in our lives, working through every, every, everything, the blessings and the challenges, right? The good things and the hard things. He's working through all of those things for your good. He's fighting for you because of the love covenant relationship that you have with him. You're in his family. Don't mess with his family. Right? You mess with me, you mess with my whole family. Right? God's fighting for you. Make sure, be very careful to love the Lord your God. Because being in covenant relationship with God brings the benefit of His protection and His blessing. And those who oppose God will find God opposing them. And that is not a place that we want to be in. I'll say that again. I think it's worth saying for clarity. Those who oppose God will find God opposing them. And Israel themselves, that Joshua was, was writing to, at times in their future, at times, you know, Joshua hoped that they would just stay faithful to God for the rest of their future, but they didn't, right? The the. the the Old Testament tells the story of Israel again and again being disloyal to Yahweh, being disloyal to their God, and God actually used their enemies against them. He actually fought against Israel to discipline them and correct them and to bring them back on track. God chose the other side, and we don't want to find ourselves in that situation. So stay close to Him. Draw near to Him. Walk with Him. And you will find God fighting for you. And through you. Secondly, 
verses 6 to 8. Be very strong. All right. Verse 6. Be very strong. Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses without turning aside to the right or to the left. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them, but you are to hold fast to Yahweh, your God, as you have until now. It's interesting that these things that Joshua says to the people gathered, I don't know if he was at his deathbed or on his deathbed or how close he was to to dying, but but he's gathered these people to talk to them, have this last conversation with them. And it's interesting that the very same things that Joshua says to them are the things that God said to him back in Joshua chapter 1 when we, when we started this, this series. We looked at that. Where God three times said to Joshua as he's getting ready to lead these people across the the Jordan River, and into the promised land, God says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Right? Three times. And he tells him to not turn to the right or to the left, but to follow all the the words of the book of Moses. So now Joshua is saying those same things. He's getting ready to leave the world And he's telling those that he has led that it is now their turn to live out these principles as he had showed them. It's interesting. We sang the song Yeshua earlier this morning. And most of you probably know what that means, but it's Hebrew for Joshua and Jesus. It's the same name. Right? Joshua, we've said this before, Joshua and Jesus in Hebrew are the same name. And so we see a shadow of Jesus getting ready, right? The, the night before he goes to the cross, having a conversation with those who have followed him, getting them ready for the fact that he's about to leave. And as I have walked in this world, so you are to walk in this world. Right? And so Joshua says, don't turn to the, to the left or to the right. The pull to the left and the pull to the right is strong. And I'm not talking about political left and right here. Right? Right? I'm talking about the, the, the bunny trails and, the, and the, the cul-de-sacs that we get off of the path that God has for us. And we find ourselves down a, down a road He never intended us to go. The pull of the world to the left and to the right. The world, the flesh, and the devil, folks, war against us. Knowing, loving, and walking faithfully with Jesus. And I feel as though some of us need to hear this message today from Joshua saying, getting right in our face and saying, be very strong. It is tough out there. And you know what? It is very difficult to be very strong on our own. This instruction that Joshua gave wasn't to an individual, but was to a community. One of the big reasons that we need each other, we need to not forsake the gathering. We need to be in each other's lives. One of the big reasons is that the pull to the right and the pull to the left are very strong. And we need to be even stronger to stay faithful to Jesus. To stay faithful to Him every day. 
Every day there are things pulling at our hearts. Affections of the world that want to take us off track. The reality is God has plunked us. I mean, it would be so much easier if we just started a commune somewhere, right? We just moved, we just checked out of the world altogether. We went to some commune somewhere and we didn't have all the distractions of the world. One big problem with that, who would tell the world about Jesus? God has plunked us in the middle of the world for a reason. To be salt and light in the world. But if we lose our light and we lose our saltiness, we are no good to the world. Right? If we become like the world... We lose our message. We lose our integrity. The messages that the world throws at us, telling us it's all about you. It's all about what you want. It's all about what you need. Grab all you can, while you can, because it's all about you. It's the message of our world. Boiled down in a nutshell, it's all about you. Because the world, the world's message is, you're God. The, wor- the universe revolves around you, right? Joshua tells these people, but you are to hold fast to Yahweh your God as you have until now. Preaching to the choir because you're here, right? You want to serve Jesus. You're in the room. So I, I honor the fact, I celebrate the fact that you have made it this far, right? As you have until now, keep holding on to Jesus. Hold fast to the Lord. Lastly, God keeps his promises. Let's go down to verse 14. Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. That's a, that's a phrase we come across once in a while in the Old Testament. It sounds a little weird to us. But he's saying, I'm about to die. Right? To go the way of all the earth means like... None of us gets out of here unscathed. We all, we're all going to die someday unless Jesus returns and takes us out, uh, takes us up with him. We're all going to die. That's the way of all the earth, right? So Joshua says, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. This is, you know, my last will and testament. You know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises of Yahweh your God have the Yahweh your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. That's a pretty powerful statement, isn't it? We just need to we just need to camp there for a moment. You know with all of your heart and soul That not one of the good promises that Yahweh the Lord your God has given you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. The Bible, the Bible is full of promises from God. This book is full of promises from God. And God is a promise-keeping God. When He makes a promise, He will keep it. Right? God promised to redeem humanity out of our mess. In fact, the same day that Adam and Eve 
failed and fell into sin and rebelled against him, he said he would send someone to crush the serpent's head. And he kept the promise. He promised to Abraham that he and Sarah would have a son in their old age. And he kept the promise. He said that through that son, he would raise up a nation. And through that nation, the whole world would be blessed. And he kept that promise. And he promised that when the Messiah comes, he would be pierced for our transgressions. He would be bruised for our iniquities. And the wounds that bring us peace would be on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. And he kept that promise promise. There are hundreds of promises that God has made in the scriptures. Hundreds of them have already come true and hundreds have yet to come true. They're they're for the future. But God has shown us that he is a God who keeps his promises and that his promises are good. He has shown us that he will keep his promise even if it costs him everything. He is committed to keeping his promises. In fact, he said to Jeremiah, I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. I watch over my words to see that they are fulfilled. He is intentional about every promise. But of course, many of God's promises, as many of you know, many of God's promises come with conditions. Right? If you do this, then I will do this. It's like our relationship with our kids. Our love is unconditional. But some of the blessings are conditional. Right? We would be foolish to reward bad behavior or a bad attitude. We want to help our children become mature and responsible. And when they show themselves to be that, then it unlocks blessing in their lives. When they rebel or behave badly, then blessing is withheld for their good. For their good. So God promised, in the passage, uh, just read on a little further. Verse 15, but just as all the good things the Lord has promised you have come to you, so he will bring on you all the evil things that he has threatened until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land he has given you. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, the Lord's anger will burn against you and you will quickly perish from the land, the good land he has given you. So God promised judgment would come on Israel if they broke the the covenant. But all God's promises are good, Joshua said. All these good promises. The reality is those promises of judgment are good too. It's, It's good when a parent follows through on a warning because it enforces justice and right boundaries. And so God watches over those promises as well. Because it's all about relationship, isn't it? It's all about our relationship with Him. He invites us into the blessing of knowing knowing Him, 
walking with Him, receiving all that He has stored up for us. I'm going to ask the worship team to come on up as we get ready and those who are serving communion to get ready. Folks, Jesus, Jesus is the fulfillment of the promises of God. Jesus is the fulfillment of the promises of God. He is the one who came to crush the serpent's head, right? He is the one who was pierced for our transgressions. He is the one that came to set the prisoners free. And if you trust what Jesus did for you on the cross, you will find forgiveness and you will find freedom in Christ. Because God promised it. So we're going to prepare our hearts to receive communion this morning, to receive the symbols of the broken body and shed blood of Jesus. As I often say, um, first of all, very practically, The trays that will come around have two cups, one inside the other. Just take them both out and separate them. The bottom cup has a wafer in it. The top cup has the juice. And just hold on to them until we all have them and we'll, we'll take them together. And secondly, doesn't matter what your church background is. Uh, if you're here this morning and you trust Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you're welcome at the table. And, uh, and so feel free to, to join us in, in communion, to receive the elements as they, as they come by. Um, if you're still on a journey, you're not quite sure about this Jesus thing yet. You're still in process. We want you to know that's okay. We welcome your journey here. We welcome the process. And if you don't feel like you're ready to receive communion, then just pass the, pass the tray by and, uh, and there's no judgment, right? But we will continue to pray for you that God will bring you to a place where you come to know him as your Savior and Lord. And maybe that day is today and maybe that moment is right now if you're ready to say Jesus I believe you Jesus I trust you then you're ready to take communion receive it today worship with us as the team leads us and communion is brought to you
everything, every blessing that we have, spiritual blessing, is ours because of Christ and in Christ. I want to, we're just going to take a moment to read a few verses out of Ephesians chapter 1. I felt led to do that today. I want you to listen to the blessings that are described here that are ours in Christ. Praise be to God. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and His will to the praise of His glorious grace which He has freely given us in the one He loves. In Him we have redemption through His blood the forgiveness of sins in according with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us with all the wisdom and understanding He made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure which He purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reached their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have brought to us from the Father. By your death on the cross, your body pierced and broken, your blood shed for us. Thank you for what you have brought into our lives. Hope, forgiveness, freedom, joy, peace, life. So as we hold this wafer, the emblem of your body broken for us, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that upon your body on that cross, my sin was put upon you. My guilt was put upon you. So that when you died, pierced and broken on that cross, you died in my place, and my sin died with you, and I am forgiven. Let's take the emblem of Jesus' broken body. And Jesus, thank you for your blood shed on the cross. Thank you that your blood has purchased our redemption, our our freedom from slavery to sin. You set us free. And by your blood, you have reconciled us to the Father so that we can know his love and his peace. And by your blood, chains of sin in our lives are broken and we are free. Let's take the emblem of his shed blood. Let's stand and worship him together. Worthy is the Lamb, seated on the throne. Lift him up this morning. He's worthy of our worship. Crown you now with many crowns, Jesus. Hallelujah. You reign
Praise the Lord. Praise God. The Lord's been so good to us this morning to experience his presence. Thank you, Pastor, for the word today. And we really hope that all of you can stay for this barbecue. It's going to be a great time of food and fellowship and fun. And we're just going to ask now the Lord's blessing upon the food. Thank you, Father, for your presence here today. Thank you for how you've ministered to us, O oh God. And we pray for those today, Lord, that may be struggling with uh, trying to be an overcomer. We pray at this time that you are still within them a confidence, knowing that you are going before them, O oh God, and that you'll give them many victories. And Lord, we now ask you, Father, for your blessing upon the food that we're about to receive, and we thank you for this time that we can have together to get to know one another better and to fellowship. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said,